You're listening to The Business Marketing Show. On this episode, we have our guest, Rob Cubbon from robcubbon.com, and we'll be discussing how to produce and market your e-courses on Udemy. You can find us at businessmarketingshow.com, on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Hi everyone, this is Ed K. Smith from The Business Marketing Show. Thank you for joining us today. We have a special guest with us uh, on the show all the way from Prague. We have uh, Mr. Rob Cubbon from robcubbon.com. And uh, I met Rob back at the Fusion Dojo event in 2014, I think it was. And I have to double check, Rob will confirm that with me in a sec. And uh, Rob has uh, lots of experience in the publishing side of things for, for selling books and courses and also being a um, publisher on the Udemy platform, which is what we're going to talk about now. Thank you, Rob, for joining us. Welcome. Thank you, Ed. Yes, it was indeed uh, around October 2014 when we met in Chiang Mai, I think. Yes, it, that's right. I, I presented at two of them, the one before in 2013. So um, sometimes they blend together and there's lots of the same people who turned up to both. So I couldn't remember whether you were there in the first one or not, but no, definitely 2014. Uh, so that, that was great. And yeah, thanks for coming on because we had to sort of organise our, our, our time. I'm in Perth and you're in Prague, so we're sort of completely opposite ends of the time spectrum. So <laughs> yeah, yeah but it's, well. great to be, it's great to be on, Ed. Thanks very much for having me. You are most welcome. So a bit of back history. One of the things we always like to do on the podcast is find out where you've come from because that's part of your story of how you got to what you're doing now. Um, you weren't just born an internet marketing publisher <laughs> dude <laughs> you, you were doing other things so let's yeah. let's rewind you're you're about a year younger than me so we'll rewind back to the 80s when you've just left high school <laughs> uh, nine, 1985 you would have been in your last year of high school i'm guessing um so everyone's calculating now yeah. 86 yeah. okay so yeah. When you finished high school, what did you what did you start doing? What was the what was the attraction for, uh, for the job market for you back then? Yeah, well, Ed, um, as you well know, uh, the, the, in those days you couldn't go and jump jump on a computer and get online and 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 start your own business. Um, no. where you, you know, and uh, I was a bit, I, I was a lost, I was a lost soul in those days, Ed. I, I, I had nothing to do, I had nothing to offer. I, all I wanted to be was be a rock and roll star. And when I found out that I really couldn't play guitar and, and people didn't really want to listen to me sing, um, <laughs> I, I was stuck out of ideas. So I, I just went into um, a, a, a very... Um, uh, humanities vague vague sort of uh, English literature course in in college in college it was not really a university because I didn't do very well at school I wasn't very uh, good with exams so I had a very poor college degree uh, mm -hmm. in London and Sound then I mate. hit the <laughs> yeah yeah sounding familiar yeah. and I hit hit the job market with um, not much of a clue what I wanted to do and um, so I vaguely ended up doing things that I thought would be creative and fun. So I was working for newspapers and magazines. Um, but again, not being, not having much direction in life, I, I quickly ended up um, pretty rudderless and just freelancing around London. And I picked up a few skills in desktop publishing, um, like Photoshop, Quark, and Illustrator. Quark doesn't really exist when it does exist, but nobody uses it anymore. Yeah. Um, and, and so I was doing print you know, typesetting artwork, uh, which is a very, it's not very interesting. Um, and I was a bit lost, you know, I, I, I didn't really know what to do. I was just working for the paycheck, um, like a lot of other people. And, and I was in, I was stuck in London because that's where the money was. I couldn't really move around much. Mm. Uh, I tried, I tried, I did the best I could, you know, I tried lots of different things, but nothing worked, you know, and that, that's, um, I, I could go on, but that was quite a lot of years. So, uh, that, you know, it's, as you, as you rightly say, um, thanks for pointing out. I'm 47, <laughs> and um, you're still you know, younger there were than a lot me, of, so that's all right. 
<laughs> not by much um, but there was a lot of years like that um, and I uh, look back and I and uh, I, I you know I'm I'm happy where I am now, um, considering, you know, that could have gone on for the rest of my life. Absolutely. I hear what you're saying because I was exactly the same. I, I didn't find the space that I'm in now until uh, I was probably about 32, 33, something like that, uh, and Ooh. had lots of years doing crappy jobs that I hated and the days dragged on, you know, mm-hmm. 9 o'clock through to 5, couldn't wait till that 5 o'clock time before I could, you know, check out. And, and that was back in the day, which a lot of people these days have never experienced the time clock, you know, that the, the, the card, you got to stick it in and it goes oh, stamps wow. it. You remember those? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they, they, they're killing the soul. They were purely designed to do that, I'm sure. Uh, they were horrible yeah. things. You felt like you were owned by this stupid mechanical clock thing stuck on the wall and it controlled your life. Anyway, that's being slightly melodramatic. But it was not a pleasant existence. And I'm yeah, sure agree, there's lots of people who are yeah. like that now. But yeah. the difference is... So we did not have the options that people have now to develop a business. And um, the options are endless, which sometimes can be a problem in itself because people can't make a decision what to do. And they should just pick something and do it and try it. But nowadays, the options are pretty amazing as what people can generate in terms of income online and start at part time. They don't have to quit their job that they mm. don't necessarily like. They can ease into it and start replacing or adding to their income. And I always say some of the things you've done in your past quite often contribute to what you're doing today. And there's often times in my business where a lot of the things that I thought were non-important for the experiences I had in my jobs that I didn't like have actually become very, very handy today, uh, particularly with consulting with clients and different things and sort of relating to them on different levels and what their businesses are. So so that's one way of looking at it, turning a slightly mm. negative past into a positive use now. Mm. But you were talking about your publishing and all the experience you had with that. I mean, that has to come into play with, with what you're doing now. It did a little bit. I've got to. I've got to say, I've got, Ed. You know, you made three or four points that I really totally agree with you there. You know, about doing things in your part time, and it's so easy. Uh, well, it's not easy, but there's a lot of opportunities now to work online and start and start and earn money outside of the employment thing, mm. and uh, and all those crappy jobs, as you rightly say, um, they. There were some important things that I learned. I mean, not least of all, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. I still use them now, even though I tend to outsource a lot of work. Um, uh, Just getting things right for clients, you know, the back and forth and, and, and... uh, and deciding on what works best in, in marketing and headlines, writing headlines, choosing yep. images, all of that. You know, it, I was doing it 20 years ago, although at an extremely low level, and I, you know, I, I, I didn't need to do it for so long in, in, with, with such a, you know, uh, at such a low level. And if you know, but you know, it's all in the past now. It doesn't really matter. But you know that that's the way it was. So yeah, I, I mean, I, we we seem to have a very um, mirrored life, um, even though we were on different sides of the, the planet. Um, but uh, definitely, um, uh, it sorted itself out in that I I found I, I by hook or by crook, and I tried lots of things. I mm. eventually found a way of making money outside of the nine to five employment. Yeah, and. It allows you to have quite a degree of flexibility in what you're doing and where you live and you're traveling around at the moment uh, mm-hmm. and you're not tied to one location to earn your income, which I think is is brilliant. And there were only very limited occupations, you know, 30 years ago, yeah. 20 years ago that you could actually do that. So now there's, there's a whole variety of things that enable you to, to be able to do that. So can you explain to the listeners what is your business and how is it you generate your income? Tell us about what you're doing now in the online space. Okay, Ed. Well, it goes back to how I managed to escape 
the nine to five because what I <laughs> yeah. what, <laughs> without being too melodramatic, it would be very melodramatic. But you know, it is it is it is cool. So uh, it, it, my way of doing it, and it was so it was so obvious. You know, it's just do what I was doing at work at home, uh, and so basically, I offered design services to clients. Um, you know, and whatever they wanted, I would sit sit at home and with with the broadband as it was then. I'm going back to about uh, 2006 now, 2005, 2006. You know, I could I could do pretty well. Um, I could do pretty much a, a decent job for some clients uh, in the print de- design sphere. So that's what I did for for a couple of years. And um, the the way I did that was to um, set up a, a a website, and it was at robcoven.com. That was the one, the one that I still use, and that's what I was using at that time. Mm-hmm. So um, all well and good. I I do print design. I I then taught myself web design because every obviously everyone wants a website. Everyone's asking me if I do website, so I started doing web design. So I still do that to to, to today. I I work for clients, and I as I say, I outsource a lot of it now. Um, and uh, it's not overbearing because I've just kept my f- favorite clients basically uh, because what's happened in the last two or three years is that I've been making more money from um, selling ebooks and video courses um, yeah. on, on, online which is what we're going to talk about and um, in on various platforms not just my own but al- also other other platforms like Udemy and the books obviously sold through Amazon um, but that makes more now. So then and it's a nice sort of passive base. Um, and, and it's, again, it's a recurring income that doesn't need, I don't need to theoretically do much to, 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 for it to keep coming in. And I've got that and, and I still do client work as well and, and looking to go into consulting and webinars now. So I'm, I'm still trying different things. That's brilliant. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's, not dissimilar to to me. I mean, so I got started in the online space in 2002, technically. Um, we were the first company in Australia to, to consult with Google AdWords and work with clients with Google AdWords back then. Um, that was, yeah, that's gone back now. <laughs> no one knew what AdWords was back then. Um, and, and we're WordPress developers as well, have been for about 10 years but we sort of really only got into doing that because we found probably like you that there was a necessity for it because there was a lot of bad web developers <laughs> and a lot of the clients we were consulting with their websites constantly needed fixing or redoing because the the web designer slash web developer which technically are two different things um they, they had no marketing sense and they were not sort of designing the sites from a, a marketing standpoint so we would have to go in and do that but um, a, a lot of the courses and things that, that you have are based around WordPress and um, Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator and how to use things like Aweber and, and MailChimp for email autoresponders. So in, in terms of the stuff you do for, for WordPress, so you're, you're working with clients and, and actually designing sites for them, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, and I also still do print uh, sort of general graphic design as well for okay. my clients. Okay, yeah. so that ties in very neatly together. That's a, a very um, cross-pollination sort of mm-hmm. process. You need both of those to have an effective website, the design and the and the, the technical side of it. Mm-hmm. And, and now you're doing courses as well uh, through Udemy. So can you explain mm-hmm. what Udemy is, and that's spelled U-D-E-M-Y, dot com mm-hmm. we'll put that in the show notes mm-hmm. and i don't know how that name came about you may be able to tell us but uh yeah. it's, an, it's an online course platform so yeah how did you get involved well, with that? It, well it's uh it's one of these things that some people say oh is it udemy or, or udemy uh, i say udemy uh, same as you and it's actually comes from the word academy so it's it's like you and academy because it's oh. an online <laughs> it's not the best word. It's probably not the best domain in the world, but uh, that's what they went for. And it is the market leader in online learning. Um, in the, uh, what's a what's called asynchronous online learning. Mm. So it's a platform that delivers courses, and you just buy the course, and you have a lifetime 
Um, you have nice time access to that course, but you can take it the next day, or you can take it next year, or you could dip into it for the next ten years. Uh, it's yours forever, and and you just purchase courses like that, and it's doing very well. When I joined, can you believe it? Um, it was actually two and a half years ago, mm-hmm. um, and you asked me how how I got to know it. It was just like a friend of mine who was a blogging friend of mine. I I was I still am pretty sort of into blogging. And so I meet people, as you do in, in your in your industry. And she happened to mention that she put a course on there, and she'd been making money. And I thought, oh right, okay, well, I'll give that a go. And uh, that was two and a half years ago. They had one million users, and they now have seven million users wow. in two years. And they've and they've picked up a lot of funding as well in that time. And I don't know, funding maybe it's not a good thing, but uh, you know, you don't know how much money they're making. Uh, I suspect it's it's a fairly good business model, and they're going to be around for a while. But you you never know. Um, however, there are lots of other platforms out there that are, you can, and you don't have to be exclusive to Udemy. You can put your courses on there as many as you want. Anyone can do it. Um, just needs to be video. Just needs to be hey, or, you know a basic sort of degree of uh, quality, and, and uh, it doesn't have to be very long. And um, you can put them there and you can put them anywhere else you want. You can put them on your own site. There are other online learning platforms. And there's incredible opportunities there, not only to make money, but also to grow your brand. I mean, you, all the videos has your name on it, your face, and, and you can, can get people back to your site and joining your list. Um, so it, uh, to me, it's, um, it's another wild, wild west sort of um, online on- opportunity. In the, mm. in the way it's the early days so yeah absolutely uh, you, can get, you can get away with more there's less competition you know it, it, it there really is um uh, it really is a uh, i'm quite a big sort of proponent of it <laughs> yeah and look I, I think it's an amazing space and i mean i've used similar platforms the linda platform which i'm mm-hmm. sure you're familiar with uh, do, do you have stuff on Linda? I think it's spelled L Y N D A dot com. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. No. 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 I don't. Linda is a little bit different in that they have their own courses and their own. You have to be a Linda instructor, right? And, okay. And you have to be exclusive. Um, so it's a great platform, and and you know, as you know, LinkedIn bought it, and, mm. and, and you know, it's it's a huge business. Um, in fact, online learning uh, is, is um, sort of like forty billion a year or something ridiculous yes. like that. Yes, yes, um, it's, it's amazing. So, yeah, so there's plenty of platforms, but Linda really isn't kind of a direct. Um, it's not something that you, you can put into the mix. There are other right, ones like okay. Skillfeed and Skillshare that you you can put your courses on, similar to you to me. Okay, so that was Skillfeed and Skillshare. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Okay. dot yeah. com. We'll we'll put those in the show yeah. notes as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, you, in terms of Udemy, I mean, I've only personally just started using it in the last week or two, and bought a few mm-hmm. courses. And um, uh, one of the first ones I got was the Seth Godin uh, freelance course, which was which is great. And a, as you said, it's. I mean, most of his videos are dispersed between him with a white background sitting on a chair talking to the camera. Uh, intermix with some questionnaires that you you go and and do, um, and quite often some of the other ones I've seen there's some some screenshots of of a computer like a like a training webinar sort of thing that a lot of people are familiar with, but they're all in little short bursts like this, you know, two mm-hmm. three five minutes. It's typically not a lot longer than that, um, mm-hmm. and it always gives you the indication of how far you've watched. So anytime you go back into it, you you slot st- straight back into where you were. Um, and, mm-hmm. and then when one course finishes, it automatically starts playing the next one. So it's really, really easy to use. There's, mm-hmm. there's no training on how to use Udemy as a consumer, but there's mm-hmm. obviously some things you need to learn about uh, actually going and setting up courses yourself. So how hard is it for someone who's got some course material already uh, to, to mm-hmm. go and set up something on Udemy? It's actually very easy, Ed. I mean, as you've, as you've noticed, it's a very uh, easy platform to use when you're a user. It, it does seem to work quite well, and, and hats off to them because it can't be an easy thing to do to get a site like that working as well as it does with all the video, uh, hard HD video that it's, it's got to deliver 
uh, all the time. But mm. um, setting yourself up as a, as an instructor is is really quite easy. I mean, you can do it by you, you can just you can just do it via the the platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, uploading is sort of similar to YouTube uploading. You know, it's um, it, it takes a little bit of time, but but you know, you can have it going in the background or do it overnight or what have you. Um, you probably need to engage with them a little bit. Uh, there is a Facebook group called the Udemy Studio, uh, which is a great place that if you've got any questions to, to pop in and ask. And you can also have your um, maybe do a two-minute video and ask them, is this all right? If I do the rest of the, my videos like this, will it be okay? And they'll, they'll, they'll give you the thumbs up on that. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, very, it's pretty easy. I mean, uh, you know, I think the making the, diff the course would be the difficult thing. Um, but uh, the, the, the Udemy structure and the, and the platform absolutely works, works a dream at the moment. Cool. Okay. So you as someone who's putting courses on there, how is it structured? How do you make your money? Um, are well, you able to to build a list through Udemy compared to using your own course platform on your own website? How, how does it work and, and uh, what sort of percentages does, does Udemy take? Okay, well, this is where it gets complicated and where I could actually talk for four hours, but I, I'll, I'll <laughs> condense to four minutes for you, uh, if I can. But um, yeah, so um, you put your courses on there, and um, it helps if you have a platform. That I've got to say that I, when I went onto Udemy, I did have a list myself, mm -hmm. and um, you you sell your courses usually at a discount. So you um, you put them on. Say you put on a three hour course. You put you put a lot of effort into this course. You put it on at ninety nine dollars. And try and sell it to people for anything between fifteen to twenty-five. So right. there's a couponing, there's a couponing thing in the back end, and you can, um, you know, try and sell those coupons. Best if you sell them to your list. And if you sell any of your courses through these coupons that you have created, uh, you will get ninety-seven percent of that coupon. Uh, and even if the coupon is of ninety-nine, you'll get you'll get roughly nineteen. Six dollars in your pocket for, a, okay. for that sale, and you'll get that. You'll get that in a month's time or something. Uh -huh. uh, you get paid monthly, um, so you know that's that's quite fair. Um, however, um, some people don't like the fact that if Udemy, uh, if you have a, an organic Udemy sale, so somebody pops up on Udemy, does a search, finds your course, buys it, uh -huh. you then get fifty percent of that of that sale. Yep. And that will probably be at a discount as well. Most most people buy Udemy courses at a discount. They're, yep. they're running discount schemes. I hope you didn't pay the full whack for the Seth Godin course. Um, you know, it, it, if you if you add things to your wish list, they'll probably offer you in the next couple of weeks. That you'll probably be offered a a cup, you know a coupon for that. So um, it, they're always doing um, li little little. Uh, sales like that and also yeah. they sell advertising they, they buy advertising they, they they promote your course on facebook on google uh, with, with with adsense you know um so um you know if they do that you only get 25 percent. and if, if an affiliate uh, sells your course you only get 25 as well so people look at these numbers they see their courses being sold at ten dollars and they're getting two dollars fifty and they think, oh my God, I'm selling a, this this premium, this this wonderful product um, for, and I'm getting a pittance for it. Yeah. Um, so I would um, urge people not to look at these these percentages. I would urge them to look at the monthly fig amount of money that they make, and and to look at the number of people who are watching their courses and who are getting, um, uh, seeing their brand, um, li listening to, to, to this guy be an expert, impart his knowledge and see his name and then go back yeah. to his website. And so you're making, a, you know, it, as I say, 7 million people on the platform, you're m making money from your own efforts, you're making money from Udemy's efforts, you're making money from the affiliates' efforts, and you're increasing um, the power of your brand because lots of people are seeing these courses. So yeah. um, 
you know, if that answer, I could go on and on and on. But no, no, uh, that, that's great. I'll ask you some specific questions because I happen to be in Udemy at the moment on the website. <laughs> And um, I happened to look at this uh, really cool dude. I know his course called Running a Web Design Business, uh, a guy yeah. called Rob Coven. Uh, have you heard That's, of him? So, he sounds like an interesting he's, course. He's, he's, like, <laughs> he's pretty popular. <laughs> he's pretty popular on Udemy. So now uh -huh. I'm, I'm looking at the page of this now, and it says you've got 92 ratings. So I'm assuming that's feedback ratings. And... Uh -huh. um, you, you've almost got full five stars, Rob. You're just like a corner of a star off having full five stars. So well done. That's a that's an excellent thing to see. And it says you've had 10,090 students enrolled. So that's a bloody lot of people. I know. Um, so, so as you say, that's exposure. Yeah. And I think the thing with affiliates and commissions and all sort of stuff, because that's how I actually really first got started in online marketing was affiliate marketing is hmm. you're giving away a percentage of the profits that you would never have had in the first yeah. place. Exactly. So whether it's 25% or 50%, who cares? You never have got that if someone didn't refer or someone didn't, you know, you, you didn't get the traction from the, using the, the Udemy platform. So uh, as you say, you've got to look at the bigger picture. You can't just focus on, on, on the, the small percentages because small percentages, you know, multiplied um mm. add up to a, a lot of a lot of business so look at mcdonald's you know if you think oh who's gonna who wants to go and start a mcdonald's franchise or you know sell hamburgers when you're only making a couple of cents uh, on a hamburger but you know times that by thousands and millions and <laughs> oh, mm. anyway people get the idea so so looking at this you know you've got a full description of what's going on and what the what the course is about um and and then it's Pretty straightforward, and the thing that I that I like about Udemy that I that I didn't realize until I started doing this was they've got a an app for the iPhone or iPad, or maybe it's just for the iPad. Is it just for the iPad? You know? No, I should think it's iPhone and, and iPhone and I, yeah, okay. Uh, and that pr uh, promotes in-app purchases. Yeah. So, so that's just how much easier does it get? You download the <laughs> Udemy app. You, you've got it connected to your iTunes account. You go, oh, that course looks great. And you click the buy button and it's done. It's easy, yeah. it's easy consumption. Yeah, you get a lot of sales that way. But you, you, they are, but you get, I think they, all the in-app purchases you, are literally $2 to you because um, they're very cheap. But um, yeah, uh, they come from everywhere, the purchases. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And how do you deal with, uh, are people able to get refunds say if they buy the course what's the, yep. what are the the rules if they don't like it what's the return it's 30, rate 30 days okay 30 days and and you know you might get one percent uh refunds yeah you're always going to get people that don't like it for some reason and usually they're just that's the sort of people they are they're they're chronic refunders or time wasters <laughs> so so what other courses have you got in udemy other than the running a website design Okay, well, running yeah, running a web design business that was the one that did did the best, and that's probably a, a good lesson uh, in that um, you know people see that course and they think, oh, I could I could run a web design business. You know, I, I've put together a website. Can I, you know, let's see what that guy's got to say. And that course has done the best on Udemy. Or, although they, you know, on other platforms, other other courses do better as well. So. Uh, I've always made courses about stuff that I know how to do myself, or some stuff that I've done myself quite, quite a lot. So I, I, I've got quite a lot of courses about WordPress. So setting up a, a WordPress website from beginning to end, you know, by, buying the domain, um, getting hosting, setting up WordPress, putting in a theme, doing the plugins, making it uh, correct for. I'm actually actually do it for a one I'm doing for a, a, a sort of. I make up a client, and mm -hmm. and the other one I'm doing for a real client. I, I did a real client's website, and 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 just turned that into a, three different courses. Um, so that stuff does quite well. I also do um, Photoshop and Illustrator, as you said. They don't do so well, um, but I've just done a logo design course, which is which has started off quite well. And uh, general, you know, as I was doing online marketing for myself, you know, as I was doing 
blogging and, and uh, collecting email addresses and learning all that side of the business. Um, so I do courses about that as well. Yeah, okay. So one of the things we mentioned earlier, now I'm looking on the page again and I see there is a, a little course description and you've actually got a hyperlink, uh, Rob Cubbon, and it goes through to your personal website mm. or your, your blog, yeah. Yeah. So, which is great because that's one way of getting traffic back to your, your website. And ultimately that's the thing that you control the most. You know, Udemy mm -hmm. could disappear tomorrow for mm. whatever reason. Um, so ultimately the thing that I always talk to businesses and clients about is building the list. Now, mm. this doesn't technically allow you to build a list directly within Udemy, but you mm. can drive traffic to your website. So in yeah. terms of the, the benefits of having the course and getting the exposure, how would you advise people to build their list so they can then market to them regardless of what happens to Udemy? How do you go about doing that? Yeah, well, this is a huge, again, this is a huge, huge thing because that, you said there's a link in my description of the course, that is just like the tip of the iceberg. There's, there's millions and millions of uh, references to my website, to my squeeze pages, um, all, littered all over my courses. Um, there are announcements you can make. So I've got, I, I don't know how many students I've got on Udemy, but it'll be over 60 or 70,000 people have signed up for my courses because I've got free courses as well. Mm -hmm. They're not all paying customers. Paying customers probably, you know, 10,000 or, oh God, I don't know, I, I, you know, but huge numbers. Um, so you can send them an, uh, an announcement via the Udemy back end and that is, ends up as an email in, in their inbox uh -huh. if, they have, if they have set it up so they receive them and a lot of them do. So you can just send them an email saying, look, this is a blog post I've written. Um, you know, you're not allowed to send them to a squeeze page in one of the announcements. That would be um, too much even for you to me. But you can send them to a blog post. <clears throat> and that blog post could be a really sort of fantastic pillar article that mm. people are going to read and think this guy really knows what he's talking about. You've got, you've got your sign-up boxes. You've got pop-ups all over your site if you've, if you've set your site up correctly. And one of those, I mean, you can get hundreds of signups just for, from one of those um, uh, announcements that you send out, and you can send out as many as you want. So that, that's right, that's one thing. Yeah, and just I, I just refer to my site, and at any given opportunity, I say, um, say I'm doing a course on WordPress or or email marketing, and I'll say, you know, this is here is an example of a squeeze page. Go to robcubbon.com forward slash free, you know, and uh, they'll have a look at the, they'll, they'll see my example of a squeeze page and, um, you know, some of them are going to put their email address in because yeah, they, yeah, they'll like Absolutely. It, you know. So it's your, your so, version of product placement, basically, yeah, within, yeah. within the actual movie <laughs> you've got. <laughs> your own stuff yeah. to go and, and click through to and, and use that you're using these examples. That's very clever. I like it. I'll have to keep that in my mind um, because my wife's putting a course together at the moment for people who are career hunters, not career hunters, you know, uh, not job hunters, but they're looking for a career change. That, that sort of genre is what she's working in. And she's producing a course on the Kajabi platform, which is a, a paid mm -hmm. monthly a system that you can either connect to a WordPress site or it can be standalone, um, and it's quite easy to use. It's not it's not pretty it's straightforward for for people who aren't technical to use. But you know you're paying several hundred dollars a month uh, to use this, um, as opposed to Udemy, which I'm I'm assuming doesn't cost you anything to stick the courses on yeah. there. So if you stick yeah. a course on Udemy and it sits there for three months and no one buys anything, well that's not great because you don't make any money. But it's not costing mm. you anything. Is that accurate? That's correct. Yes. Yeah, okay, so you don't have any monthly costs. You're only paying out something if someone buys something. Um, so the, the time and energy you've got producing the course, so you can distribute it across Udemy, you can have it on your own platform, something like Kajabi and and the other sites that you mentioned, which I didn't write down. What were they called again? <laughs> skill, <laughs> skill feed and Skillshare, but there are others as well. I'm sure, I'm sure there are. And um, would you be happy to mention some of those other ones? Yeah, well, I um, the, the um, it gets a bit, it's, it's, you know, it gets a bit. You don't make so much money, but there's one called Curious.com, 
Mm -hmm. uh, which I'm quite interested in because they do, I, I, I'm so um, old hat, I tend to look at Alexa scores and everyone ta you know, takes the mickey out of me saying, Alexa scores don't mean anything. But um, they've got a good, a good Alexa score. And so I'm spending a bit of time there because they have a specific, they have a specific way of pre presenting the videos. And I, I also have a lot of relationships with other course creators and instructors and they're saying they're starting to see make some money at curious.com so i'm going i'm hitting that in a big way so that's oh, one okay. and there's several several other smaller ones um that i can i can give you in the show notes um a link links to that that maybe you know come in at like 50 dollars a month so it's not exactly um but i have a va who uploads the videos and does all that so i you know i i i've got it i've got my system down to to a hands-off thing so i'm trying to i'm trying to you know i think there's going to be some big ones in india i'm sure i can you know, that I'm sure, watch this space, you know, there will be other ones that will generate income yeah. at some point. There's a lot happening in India. A, a, a friend of mine who's Australian, who's like me in the domain investing space, he just came back from a, <clears throat> something called DomainX, which is a big domain conference in India. And there was, I think, close to 800 or 900 people, maybe even 1,000 people at this conference. Uh, and you know it's a, it's a massive growth area yeah. in in India, yeah. and you think of the population, one point two billion people. Even if yeah. you're just looking at the middle class sector, which is you know two to three hundred yeah. million people, that's a lot of people. That's the population yeah. of the US, just in the middle class sector, uh, yeah. and it's rapidly, rapidly speak, growing. Yeah, Sorry? they speak English. They, they speak, speak English. English. It's a democratic place in terms of. Yeah government and you know they do have corruption like anywhere else but probably slightly different in india you've you know but it's good to have connections anywhere you're working in a country that's not where you spend most of your time but lots of opportunity and this is sort of stuff that's probably getting you know eaten up over there in terms of education and and skilling up on the internet marketing side of things so yeah Lots and that's another thing. That's another bit of advice. You know, make sure you make when you're making courses that you speak English in a very simple way, because not everyone who listens to you is going to speak English as a as a first language. Very good tip. Yep. So speak slowly. <laughs> be, be clear. That's, Indeed. That is fantastic. Now, uh, I'd like to give some l links to people who uh, would want to go and do some testing of your courses and you said you had some free ones so uh, what would be a url and we can stick this in the show notes um for mm. people but just what's one of the urls um the one of, i i'm gonna have to get the udemy um courses up but uh, one of my courses that's that does quite well um it's kind of a feeder course in into um my other courses and it's called um talk it's not got a very good title actually it's called talking with clients creating a wordpress website mm -hmm. uh, and it's a, it's a good sort of um course to um start you into wordpress because it's talking to a client who's just starting their website and so it serves a, a dual purpose it, it helps people um, with their client interaction and the questions that they should ask a client when they're starting, uh, when they're developing a website for a client. And it's also good for people who are new to WordPress and new to websites, what sort of things they should be thinking about. Um, so, so that's um, udemy.com, WordPress website talking to clients is, is the URL, but we can put that in the show notes. And, and you, that's completely free to, to, to take. Cool. And I mean, the great thing about Udemy, it's very easy. You just go and search on Rob Cubbon and uh, yeah. they, they find all your courses and listed there and you can select whether they're paid or free. So they'll see the free, the free ones there. Um, it's very intuitive to use. There's no explanation required on how to do this. One of the things I have found that's interesting is there's lots of courses on how to make money selling Udemy courses on yeah. Udemy. <laughs> <laughs> Which seems to be doing very well by looking at some of the stats of what some of these guys have got going on. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I think the one, the one that says how I make four thousand dollars a month is, is probably does quite well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> fascinating. 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 So, uh, any other nuggets you'd like to pass on about uh, using this platform? 
Um, yeah, well, I think I, I, no, the one thing I would say is to make multiple courses. I think that's because because then you can cross sell between courses. So it's it's like anything else. It it does take a bit of time to, to get you get the ball rolling. So you know, have a, have a, make a free course, make an expensive course, and then maybe a cheaper course, and and you know you'll start to see a bit of traction because the people who like you will buy multiple products from you you see that's the thing um so i, I think it's the it's make make sure it's a long-term commitment for course creation don't just lock yourself away and create a big mega course that takes months and months and months i'd i just put out bite-sized uh, two hour to three hour or, or even half hour free or one hour courses and and just uh, get a bit of a production line going and, and make a name for yourself. I think that's the way to make money on you. Yeah, great advice. And sort of, you know, really you're using a freemium model, aren't you? You're getting people in, yeah. and getting a lot of exposure from some of your free courses. That then people think, oh, that was really cool. If this free one's this good, then, you know, the paid one's yeah. going to be just as good, if not better. So, yeah. you know, they're not so, you know, you've you've taken them from being what we would classify as a suspect to a prospect. You know, they're, they're, a, they're a warm lead now because they've had that exposure to what you do. So that's a, it's a very clever business model. So moving away from the course platforms for a moment, you've also been writing some books. You've got a couple of eBooks you've produced. So what are, what are they about? Um, well, uh, I, they're about different. Well, I've been um, writing about the same thing. I've got seven books on on Amazon and and a couple on um, which are available on my own site, and they tend to be around the same thing. So, running a web design business, selling courses on Udemy, would you believe? Um, you know, general ones about um, passive income and building a brand and WordPress and stuff like that. And I have, to, uh, for my sins, um, branched out into the pers personal development niche. So I, I just always loved reading books about personal development. So my last book was, was on that um, subject, and that was on Kindle. Fantastic. And that's a great platform and such a, again, Back in our day, you didn't have this. You had to publish, and when you were publishing, you had to find a publisher that would then print, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of books that you had to try and sell. Or you had all that sort of responsibility. Whereas now it's print on demand or it's digital straight through Kindle. So it's a different world that we live in in terms of books. But but you've been doing something quite clever that a lot of authors um, that that I know do a similar thing, and and I have participated in this in recent days is your new book that you've got coming out uh, called free yourself um, yes. and, and you've posted on Facebook three different covers because you're trying to work yes. out the title on the cover and you're getting the feedback of your audience which is yeah. pay attention people this is very very clever because <laughs> you know often authors or publishers put out books based on what they think is good and what they think will sell and what they think looks nice uh, and quite often it's the complete opposite of what the public is thinking. So so you've put this out there and uh, you've been getting a, a lot of feedback. And it, from what I've seen, it's been quite a lot towards the same one that I picked. So I don't, you've got three different versions. So how's that been going? Well, to be honest with you, Ed, it's, it's a good marketing tactic. However, it's like doing my head in at the moment. I've got so many choices on 99 designs. I've got about, I've got more than 99 uh, problems and because uh, because I can't choose it and uh, and uh, yeah people are people are going for your choice but then I you know I don't know if, uh, there's, I'm getting more designs and I'm thinking oh what about this one and, uh, and I don't want to annoy people you know but uh, it's a great um, it's a great thing to do but um, it's just uh, it's a, I'm a little bit overwhelmed at the moment. <laughs> uh, okay, so it, it's more overwhelmed with the design side of it or. Uh, not the choice of one, two, three in terms of the books. That probably wouldn't be too bad, I can imagine. Yeah, it's 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 just the fact that I've done it. I've done it in the wrong way. I should have waited for all of the designs to come in and then and then present three to people. Um, I've done it a little bit piecemeal, and I've, I've I I did two, and then I did three, and now I'm doing nine, and and um, I think I'm just annoying everyone. 
Um, however, the big the big story, the, the takeaway from it is to um, involve people in your product at any stage and get get feedback from them because then they're, they're so much more likely to either buy it or review it uh, when it when it finally comes out. Mm. And that was how um, Tim Ferriss from the Four Hour Workweek fame, how he actually produced the the cover and the title of his book yeah. was by doing a Google AdWords campaign. He had four different ones that they'd sort of nutted it down to. Uh, and then they put out there to see which one would get the most traction. And then they used that one for the book. So uh, yeah. a, a similar thing, um, probably a bit more simple to do than rather than getting people's opinions because I did find it funny looking down the Facebook uh, page that you put. I mean, some people like me would just say, keep it pretty simple and, you know, one line or something. And But other people would give a whole screed of their whole in-depth thought process. So, <laughs> I know. Sure. You feel so bad. You feel that you have to reply to them with the same sort of amount of words. You know, I, I can't. And I can't think what to say because I just want to, I just want yeah. to get it over with. Now, yeah. and, uh, and and some people just don't hold back, do they? They just, you know, they'll just say whatever's. Like, there's no filter. The the, the <laughs> verbal diary just comes straight out and straight onto the page. So they're they're trying they're not being tactful about what they're saying. So, but the general consensus yeah. is most people like one of them, which is good. So. Yeah, you'll get there, but that's a good ex- a good experience. So now you know next time you'll do it differently. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> but that's uh, great. And um, so, look, we've been talking now for forty five minutes. So that went very quickly. That was uh, getting getting stuck into that Udemy stuff took up a lot of time. So, is there anything else you'd like to share before we finish up and let you get back on with your holiday in Prague? <laughs> Um, working holiday, Ed. Um, it, I, I don't know. I, I, I would just um, say that um, you know the the free content on the blog is probably um, what what has helped me more than anything else. Uh, mm-hmm. Putting out free content that, that it was quite of a certain high quality or as high as quality as I could make it, and yeah, that probably yeah. more than anything. Yeah, very important quality. And quantity, um, not not quantity of crap. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't help you at all. So that's fantastic. Yeah. So people go and check out robcubbin.com. We'll put the the link in there as well, and uh, check out some of Rob's free courses on Udemy and um, and and obviously some of his paid ones. Once you've 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 had a look at his free ones, or just buy the paid ones and don't even worry about the free ones. You'll be happy with that as well, won't you? <laughs> Uh, that that's a great thing to say, Ed. Thank you. <laughs> Just completely skip the free ones. Go straight in. You know, he's got to eat. He's got to eat. You know, it's expensive in Prague. I've been there, and you know, it's it's not it's not cheap buying all that all, all that uh, food there. So, <laughs> all right. Thanks, mate, for being on the show. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Ed. I enjoyed it. Thanks and, a lot. Uh, success to you with your courses and your books. And uh, we'll speak again soon. I hope so. Thank you very much. Cheers, Rob. You've been listening to The Business Marketing Show. You can find us at businessmarketingshow.com on iTunes, SoundCloud and Stitcher.